Today, Russia was celebrating the Victory Day and there were big parades across the country. This was probably one of the most anticipated events of the war, because many people expected that Vladimir Putin will make a huge statement. And he did. Just not the one that everyone was thinking about. What did Putin announce today during his parade in Moscow? Will there be a mass mobilization in Russia? Was the parade pre-recorded because there were probably some problems in the Red Square? What was the response of Ukraine and how will this affect the future course of the war? And these are the questions that we'll be talking about in my today's video. What's up investors and people of Reddit, it's the Russian dude and this is your daily update on Russian-Ukrainian war as of Monday, May 9th. You can see the main events of the day to my right along with the timestamp. This morning, Monday, May 9th, probably one of the most anticipated events of this war, which is the victory parade in Russia, has happened. And I want to personally thank every single one of you who was able to join this late night live stream. And the reason why I would be so anticipated it is because many people assumed that Putin will make a huge statement. And two most popular potential statements that President Putin was supposed to announce during this parade was either that he will announce a mass mobilization for Russians or that he will officially declare the war on Ukraine. And even though at this very moment neither of these statements came true, Putin was still able to announce something significant. So here is the quick summary of the speech that Vladimir Putin gave before the parade began. First of all, he was justifying the war in Ukraine and he said that Russia took the only correct decision to stop the spread of Nazism by invading Ukraine. I mean, these were not his exact words, but basically that's what they mean. He said that Russia had all the proof since long time ago that Ukraine is accumulating so many nazistic people inside its own country. And even though Russia was always talking about this, the NATO countries didn't want to listen. He then said that Russian intelligence told him that Ukrainians are getting ready to attack Crimea. At the same time, NATO countries were expanding its borders closer to Russia. And so for this reason, Russia realized that this war will be inevitable. The next thing Putin said is that Russia has all always been this one country who is ready to be the security guarantor for everyone else. I'm not entirely sure what this means. I guess is that Russia is ready to liberate anyone whoever asks for this. Then he proceeds talking about the Second World War and said that those people who are fighting against Nazis will never be forgotten. He said that this is Russian's responsibility to always keep memory of those people alive and to support those soldiers who are doing exactly the same thing today in the regions of of Donbass. He was then speaking about those Russian soldiers who are fighting in the territory of Donbass region. The first thing he mentioned is that those soldiers were already defending their own land and that some of these soldiers will be participating in the parade. And to show the gratitude for the ultimate sacrifice that those people made, Putin said that he signed an order to show the support for the families of those people. This order mainly targets the veterans of this war as well as their kids. For example, some universities in Russia will have to give 10% of its annual spots to those kids of those soldiers. And the education for these kids will be paid by Russia. And the next thing, which is to be honest pretty sad and ironic, is that kids of those soldiers who died in Ukraine, these kids will be able to study for free if they decide to become soldiers. So it's basically like, okay, your father has died and now we are motivating you to follow his steps kind of thing. And by the way, if you like this style of daily news reporting, feel free to like this video and subscribe to my channel. Also, please make sure to check the link in the description if you want to support Ukraine with us. Thank you so much and let's continue. So after Putin gave his speech, the parade has started. And the parade usually has three stages. First, there are people from different Russian forces branches who are just marching down the Red Square. After this, there are military vehicles and the last stage are the aircrafts and helicopters. But across entire Russia, the third stage of the parade was cancelled. Moscow, St. Petersburg, Ekaterinburg, Samara, Novosibirsk, Murmansk. These are just a few cities when there were no aircraft part of the parade. Russian officials said that the reason why there was no planes and helicopters because the weather was not ideal. But to be honest, this was a pretty sunny morning in Moscow today. But many people think that the main reason why this was cancelled was far from weather conditions. Because let's be honest, Russia is pretty big and it is literally impossible for rain to be across the entire territory 
of Russia. So the first probable reason why the aircraft part of the parade was cancelled, it is because this Il-80 doomsday plane of Russia was not working. This plane is supposed to be used by Russian officials in case there is a nuclear war. And the Ministry of Defense of Russia confirmed just a couple of days ago that this plane will take part in the parade. And the second reason why the aircraft part of the parade was probably cancelled, it is because Ukrainian will try to shoot down the planes. And I mean of course this will not be happening across the entire territory of Russia, they will just do it in the neighboring cities with Ukraine. But anyways, I don't think we'll ever know the real reason why it was cancelled, but wait, there is more. Every time the second part of the victory parade starts, which is basically military vehicles driving across the Red Square, the cameras always show these vehicles on the territory of Red Square. But this time, instead of showing tanks, armored personal carriers and other vehicles on the territory of Red Square, the cameras were showing these vehicles driving on the cities of Moscow. And the only reason why would cameras would want to avoid showing Red Square at this very moment, it is because probably something went wrong. Some people guess that maybe some of the tanks stalled or maybe there was some activists running around the Red Square. Which obviously not something you want to show on every single TV channel in Russia during one of the most patriotic events in the history of modern Russia. But whenever cameras were showing military vehicles on the territory of Red Square, there was still many inconsistencies. Which basically means that probably this part of the parade was pre-recorded and shown to us. One of the main arguments supporting this point of view was the color of the sky. For example, whenever vehicles were driving across Red Square, the sky was blue. But whenever vehicles were shown in real time on the streets of Moscow, the sky was obviously grey. And another thing is that people were never able to see vehicles and people in the same shot. Cameras were either showing close-up views of the vehicles or they were showing the close-up views of the civilians. So once again, you were not able to see vehicles and civilians in the same frame. And if you want to personally see the parade and decide for yourself whether it was pre-recorded or not, the recording of my live stream is already on my channel. And if you decide to do this, let me know in the comments whether you think this was pre-recorded or not. And one more thing, right after the parade, the representative of Ukrainian negotiations team, Mikhailo Podolyak, responded to Vladimir Putin's speech. And he made it clear, simple and straight to the point. First of all, he said that NATO was never planning to attack Russia. The second thing is that Ukraine was never planning to attack Crimea. And the third thing is that Russian soldiers are dying not liberating the territories, but occupying them. Welcome to another episode of Ridiculous Russian Propaganda. And today we have this Victory Day concert which happened in Moscow and Russians decided to feature Bonnie and Clyde, who are American gangsters back in the beginning of 20th century. And the reason why this picture was shown, it is because they were doing the slideshow of old photos from the Second World War era. And eventually they started to show pictures of young veterans. But unfortunately one of these pictures was once again Bonnie and Clyde. So it does look like that the quality control the preparation for this concert was rather low. And just imagine, this happened during the Victory Day concert, which is probably one of the biggest events in the Russian modern history. So you can only guess the level of trustworthiness of other ridiculous Russian propaganda. Today, the President of the United States of America, Joe Biden, signed the land lease program to support Ukraine. This is only the second time in the history of the United States when they approved this program. And the very first time when they did this was during the second Second World War when they were sending weapons to allied countries to help them defeat Nazistic Germany. Long story short, the land lease program allows America to send weapons to Ukraine as fast as possible and as cheap as possible. Because at this very moment Ukraine is in the stage of accumulating offensive weapons. And the faster they can get these weapons, the sooner the counterattacks of Ukrainian forces will begin. Just a couple of days ago, the advisor to the president of Ukraine, Alexei Arestovich, mentioned that Ukraine is already using some offensive weapons on some of the fronts of this war. And the use of offensive weapons allows them to push back Russian forces away from the territory of Ukraine. And after the land lease program was signed, the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, personally thanked the president of the United States, Joe Biden, through Twitter. He said that this is a historic moment because these weapons will help Ukraine defend its democracy inside the country as well as the democracy inside Europe, just like they did 77 years ago. Today, the president of Ukraine Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, mentioned to the President of the European Commission, Ursula von der Leyen, that Ukraine has successfully completed the second 
application for Ukraine to join the European Union. Just as a reminder, one of the main goals of Ukraine back in 2013-14 was to join the European Union. But pro-Russian president at that time, Viktor Yanukovych, basically declined this opportunity to Ukraine. Because of this, Maidan started and it all led to the situation that we have right now. And so, for the last several months, Vladimir Zelensky, along with his staff, was working very hard to finally make this happen. And at this very moment, they are at the very last stages of being accepted as the potential applicant to join the European Union. The head of the independent Republic of Donetsk, Denis Pushilin, mentions that as soon as Russia helps them to liberate this region, they'll consider joining Russia. Which is, to be honest, a pretty expected move. And if you've been watching my videos on a regular basis, you already know that the way Russia captures Ukrainian lands, it always goes through the same three stages. The first stage is when Russia sends its infiltrators into these regions. In this case, this is the above mentioned Denis Pushilin. The second stage is to make this region of interest to separate from Ukraine, which is basically whatever we're seeing right now whenever they call themselves Independent Republic of Donetsk, which is by the way not recognized by anyone except Russia. And the third stage, as soon as they become independent, this is when they join the territory of Russia. Let's see if this actually happens, but this is basically exactly what happened with Crimea back in 2014. Denis Pushilin also said that he wants to see Mariupol to be one of the resort towns. And just a reminder, at this very moment, Mariupol is one of the most destroyed cities in Ukraine, with approximately 90% of its infrastructure and building being completely destroyed. This weekend, the European Union was not able to agree upon the sixth package of the sanctions against Russia. One of the main things about this package of sanctions is the total ban of Russian oil. And the country which was not yet able to agree upon banning completely Russian oil was the country of Hungary. And because of this, the negotiations about the future sanctions against Russia will resume in the nearest future. In this picture presented to us by the Defense Intelligence of the United Kingdom, we can see the current condition of the war as of Monday, May 9th. And as always, the main military action is concentrated in the east and south of the country. The main goal of Russia still remains to surround the region of Donbass, which includes the regions of Lugansk and Donetsk. And at the same time, Ukrainian forces were able to launch several successful counterattacks near the city of Kharkiv. But at the same time, there are several reports that Russia is trying to increase its presence in the south of the country, near the city of Kherson. And the reason why would they need this area is so that they have better control over Crimean Peninsula. The defense intelligence of the United Kingdom also mentions that Russia is now using Soviet-era missiles. And the most likely reason why would they do this, it is because they're getting very low on modern missiles. So that in order for Russia to continue its fire pressure, they have to use missiles which were developed 50 plus years ago. And according to the United Kingdom, these missiles are less reliable, less accurate and more easily intercepted. And by the way, if you want to see more details, feel free to pause the video. According to the Deputy Prime Minister of Ukraine, Irina Verishuk, all the kids, women and elder people were evacuated from Azovstal steel factory in Mariupol. Just as a reminder, this was one of the main goals from both sides to let civilians escape. The first batch of civilians escaped approximately 150 people, but then the fighting resumed. Over the next several days, approximately 500 people were able to leave the territory of the factory. But then unfortunately, the combat actions resumed once again. And as of today, according to Ukrainian officials, all the civilians except Ukrainian men were able to be evacuated. As for now, Russian forces are once again bombarding the territory of the factory. This weekend, the president of Ukraine, Vladimir Zelensky, have met with the leaders of G7 countries. And one of the main topics of their discussion was how to reduce the dependency on Russian energy sources. Right now, there have been no agreements made. The leaders of the states will be back in their own countries, where they will discuss this with other government representatives. And only after this, G7 countries might get back together and discuss further options. Thank you so much for your attention, stay safe, check the link in the description and see you tomorrow.